our pump house. There's our corral. We have to get water from there to there. So we're just going to use some polyethylene pipe, three quarter inch, and we got 200 foot rolls. We're going to hook them together and then that will get us water out to the corral. I love how you have your magical Harry Potter endless pouch there on your shirt. I like a marsupial. Virginia found these at Home Depot. They're pretty interesting. They're barbed fittings, but they're also twist on, so it makes it a lot easier to get it into the polyethylene. But we're also going to use a clamp. Oh, of course. Magic pouch. Why are we using PE pipe instead of just running a long garden hose? Well, for one, it's cheaper. Uh, it was about $44 for 200 feet of pipe. And also, uh, this is three quarter inch, which is bigger than your normal garden hose. Garden hose is usually either half inch or five eighths. And by going with a little bit larger size, you have less friction uh, inside the pipe to worry about. Another benefit to PE pipe is that it's drinking water safe, uh, whereas not all garden hoses are. We're going to keep working on our water project. For the most part, we're going to leave the line on top of the ground, just along the fence line. But right here at the gate, uh, we're going to bury it so we're not driving. For our stock tank in our corral, I'm trying out a Hudson float valve. I've never used any sort of float valves before, but from what I've heard, these are pretty rugged and they're reliable. And they also work at low water pressure, so if you have any sort of gravity fed system, they work well for that too. So I got our Hudson float valve and I've bought some parts and pieces so we can connect it up and we'll give it a try. So this is our sub-assembly here. We have our float valve, and then I use two street L's to uh, wrap around, and then a short nipple, and then a reducer, and then I ended it with a garden hose fitting. So this will sit over the edge of the tank. At the end of our poly pipe, we have a male garden hose thread attachment to a splitter, so we can also hook up a second garden hose. And then we have one garden hose, it's very short, it's a drinking water safe hose. It just goes down and attaches to our float valve. All right, moment of truth. We're gonna go ahead and pressurize our water system to our corral. All the valves along the way are closed so we can check for leaks as we go. Energizing the poly pipe. We have one splice in our PE pipe so I want to check that. And so far it seems good. So far no leaks all the way up to the very end of our PE pipe. So now Virginia is going to turn on the line that goes to our float valve and we'll check that out. A lot of air in the system. Water! Our tank is not quite
quite level, but luckily for us, the float valve shut off right when it got up to the lip of the tank. We will go ahead and level the tank before we get our calves, but this is a successful test of our watering system. These are the bins for our free choice minerals, and we're just putting them in the corral. This is not our permanent solution for these. We actually bought these to put on a mineral sled that is yet to be built. So this is just a stopgap solution. And initially when we get the calves anyway, they're going to be in the corral probably for at least a couple days before we start training them to an electric wire and setting them out in the pastures. We picked up some bagged pine shavings for bedding uh, for the calves. Uh, later on when we have the barn and we need a lot more bedding we're going to buy shavings in bulk from a local sawmill uh, but for bedding for organic animals it either has to be a certified organic straw or hay basically anything that they could eat has to be certified organic but uh, wood shavings are fine we are getting ready to get our calves and we need to think about how we're going to feed them we have grass in our pasture and we have some hay that we harvested last year that we held on to but we also have to think about minerals, supplements, and maybe some additional protein. One of the nutrients we're going to feed our cows is kelp. Some key things that kelp is known to help with are it reduces pink eye, internal and exterior parasites, and it's also known to just make the cow look a lot healthier, like a really good coat. Another item that we are going to offer to our cows are humates. Humates are a solid form of humic acid. And some of the things it does is it can increase feed efficiency, it can also increase immunity by binding toxins, and it can increase the quality of the milk and help manure smell less. Redmond salt, selenium 90. Redmond salt is a natural occurring salt, and then this one has um, extra minerals added, specifically selenium, because we're deficient in selenium in our area. And it's known to help uh, reduce somatic cell count, increase reproduction, and also increase the components in the milk. We're going to have them separately available and that will allow us to see what it is that they are choosing to eat. We've heard from various farmers that the cows will choose different things during different seasons depending on what they feel they need and we will be interested to see if that's also the case on our farm. For various reasons we have decided to be a forage based dairy. So we're not going to feed any grains to our cows. But one thing we have to make sure of is that they maintain good body condition and also get enough protein. Since we have a lot of grass in our pasture and not as many legumes, we have purchased some additional protein through alfalfa pellets. And that's great because it will give them the extra protein and it will also give us new, more nutrients that we're importing to our farm. In the summer, we plan to buy some alfalfa hay and we are also trying to increase legumes in our own pastures through reseeding. In preparation for the calves, uh, another thing we need is a feeder for hay. I'm going to start with a pallet as a base. One of the reasons we want to build a feeder for hay is to keep the hay off the ground. And a feeder is just a more efficient way, it's less wasteful. And then also, especially in a corral where they're contained for a lot of the time, uh, we don't want them eating off the ground because we don't want them to be picking up any parasites or anything like that. I got my coffee! I'm ready to work! I'm just filling in the gaps with other boards so the hay doesn't fall through. We have this leftover 2x10 from the house project. It's all checked and it just was pretty gnarly so that's why we didn't use it on the house. But it'll work perfect for this. We're basically going to create a box uh, the height of the 2x10 and that'll hold the hay. Now that we have the box on the pallet, we're going to use some metal connectors in the corners to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Luckily, we're able to use some of our old scrap lumber to build this feeder. This is the pallet our roofing metal came on.
yourself a nice little fort? Something like that. This is the feeder we came up with. Built it out of scrap lumber in a couple hours on a Sunday morning. It has four spots. We're getting four calves. Uh, we did not put a top bar on here just because as they grow, hopefully we get a little bit more use out of this. Either it'll work or they'll wreck it because cows are hard on stuff, so we'll find out. We now have our corral, a hay feeder, mineral feeder, and waterer. We think we're ready for our cows. You ought to stay tuned for our next video to see if we are. Stay tuned on the Tomarosa and see how it goes. And if you haven't, please subscribe so you can follow along with us. Hey.